Hey guys, this is Zorn Productions, aka and I'm in 4673, and I'm back in Hakuoki Demon of the Fleeting Blossom Part 2. Exciting! I know. <laughs> I think it's just me who's excited about this, but anyways, I am allowed to. So, um, we're just gonna continue. I looked up. Saito and Hijikata were both pointedly, uh, looking pointedly at me, uh, at anything but me, and the third man was shaking with laughter. Oh my god, I forgot to do that thing again. You see, the, the game kind of, um, but I did make the tech speed completely fast. What is going on? Oh well, whatever. It's just annoying. It's just being annoying. It's just being annoying. <laughs> oh man, well, my apologies. Certainly didn't tell you, didn't I? He broke out in laughter again. So much that he was forced to wipe a few tears from the eyes as he straightened up. Well, you're welcome. I'm Soji Ogita. I know. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not saying who I'm gonna go for, but <coughs> it's so shit. Nice to see a kid who knows how to be polite. Thank you for helping me. Not quite sure what else to do, I bowed again. What the hell do you think you're doing, Okita? Commander, I understand your concerns, but we must move. Whatever mirth I might have inspired, gone, uh, gone. The man called Saito, called Saito, spoke with urgency. Hijikata nodded. The man who had called himself Okita grabbed my, hold of my wrist, gave me a smile, and began to lead me down the street. Akita. <coughs> like I watched the anime, um, so I know a little what's gonna happen. Not entirely. It's gonna be different in some ways because the paths are gonna like go out and stuff, but I know kinda know what it's about. Kinda know what. Uh, I know Soji. I know my Ogita. I'm gonna go for Ogita. There's not gonna be a single question in it, though I actually adore all of the other characters as well. So it's a, a bit of a hard choice, but not. <laughs> because it's Ogita. His grip was a touch too tight to be friendly, his fingers like iron cables around my arm. There was no question about my situation. If I ran, I would die. Quickly, at least, but still. Even if I did, if I was told, my life was in the hands of these strange men. I set my jaw and stood up as straight as I could. My eyes met those of Saito as he looked up from the blood-stained coat. I would doubt it would be best if he prepared for the worst. I doubt it was, this will end well for you. His words were like a dagger in my stomach. Words were like a dagger in my stomach. He said that to me in the anime! Something I like is how just how incredibly close they're staying to the, the anime state to this, because normally that's what, that's the downfall of it if, if they don't stay close to the anime, but this looks good. But, well, I, the anime's good, so I know the game will be as well. I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the story now. <clears throat> what was gonna happen to me? Was I was I going to die? As we walked through the cold Kyoto night I felt the uh, horror began to crawl its way up my spine once again. The cause of my horror wasn't the gruesome end that almost certainly awaited me, but something else entirely. I'd spoken to these men and watched them speak to one another, not not feet from a still warm cough so soaked in blood. That I that I had done uh, such a thing terrified me in uh, in an altogether different way. Perhaps I thought this is what it's like to go mad. Oh no, you're okay, Chizuru. You're you're gonna be okay. Chapter one. Oh! So exciting. January 1864. Still. Hmm. Was it morning? Um. 
What had happened to me? Ah, yes. Right. All at once, the events of the previous night rushed back. If, the, uh, if this was my room, if only this was my room, I thought. They had tied me up quite well, so all I could do was uh, wriggle around in the bed, twisting the blankets around me. I wished, pointlessly, I, I knew that I would back home, waking up on my warm food and food time. If this was only a very strange nightmare. But it was not. I had met those men the night before, and they had taken me with them. To the headquarters of the Shinzengumi, which is an organization of samurais. I knew that. I just clapped my hands, I'm sorry. What will happen to me now? I sighed and lay down to await my fate. It was at that moment the door slid open and a kind looking man stepped through. Me, I know you! I see you've woken up. With a soft smile, the, uh, the man, uh, he introduced himself as Inoue. Inoue-san! I know he's Inoue-san, but I'm gonna check out the encyclopedia because I don't... Oh, no, Inoue, that's just... Then there's, like, a, a, a character thing. Okay. What did I do? There you go. Yeah, he's Inoue. I'm sorry we have to treat you this way. Hold on a moment, I'll loosen the ropes, alright? Um... He smiled, quirked as he removed my ropes, working quickly and skillfully. My wrists, however, were left bound. Um, thank you. I bowed and he let out a short laugh. Now, if you'll follow me. Um, they've been discussing what to do with you since morning. For now, they've decided to hear what exactly it was you saw last night. Okay. I nodded and did my best to stand up. My body's still a bit unsteady after being tied up all night. The man who called himself Inoue was very polite and almost kind, but it was quite clear that I, that I was to do as I was told. He must have been able to guess my thoughts because he smiled at me and winked. He winked. You don't need to worry. I know they seem scary, but they're all very nice. Uh, oh, I wasn't sure what to think of that. I'm sorry for the weird voice. It wasn't really... I didn't, I didn't mean to. Even at home I'd heard the rum rumors of the vicious Shinsen Gumi. They weren't pleasant rumors. It was hard to imagine that people that the people in charge of such an organization were nice. You know I led me to a room and opened the door. I stepped inside and found myself surrounded by the leaders of the Shinsen Gumi. Their eyes stuck into me like so many knives I froze. Just uh, past, I froze just past the threshold and swallowed. Good morning. Have you slept well? Uh, um... I remembered him. Okita. Perhaps it was because I was surrounded by strange men, but it was somehow comforting to see a face I recognized. Even if it was the face of a rather frightening man who was almost certain, who was almost certainly willing to, willing and able to kill me. Well, it wasn't particularly comfortable. I chose my words carefully. Really? His face twisted sideways into a grin. Because when I had to, uh, uh, when I, uh, went to have a look at you earlier, you didn't budge no matter what I poked. But, but, what? Okita's grin widened as my face turned wet, red. Saito rolled his eyes. He's only teasing you, so she didn't go anywhere near your room. Quite silent, I stared at Okita. With, a, with his grin still playing around about his face, he glanced over at Saito. Ah, uh, I just wanted to see his squirm a little. Not very nice of you, Hajime, calling me out like that. I don't think Saito did anything wrong. You, on the other hand. Shut it, you sound like a bunch of kids. Hijikata's voice broke no, uh, no further talking. <laughs> Okita shrugged and was silent, but the smile still stayed in his eyes. His lovely smile. <laughs> I'm like controlling the fangirl inside of myself. <laughs> so Hichikata, this is your witness. Oh, it's Heisuke Sanu and Shitachi. I miss them so much. <laughs> the man who spoke was, well, 
You look more like a boy than a man. Ah, oh, don't be evil. I had ma I'd imagine the leaders of Shinsengumi to be old, or at least middle-aged men, but they all look quite young and pretty. <coughs> In fact, they all look uh, they look like a group of young facts. He's a real stick, huh? Just a kid. That was Toto. Uh, on our way from... Okay, uh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> on our way from my uh, bed, you know, I had given me a brief description of the people I was about to meet. Okay, supposedly Toto was the young youngest captain in the Shinsengumi. He's Toto Heisuke. <laughs> You're calling him a kid? Uh, Heisuke, that's rich. He chuckled as he spoke, but the way he looked at me suggested there was a uh, little he missed despite his humor. Right you are. To anybody else, I'll bet the two, uh, I'll bet the two of you just... Uh, uh, I'll bet the two of you just look like another pair of scrawny little brats. The man uh, across from him nodded with brows drawn as if he was quite serious about the subject. Um... However, I remember uh, Inoue telling me the two of the men uh, in particular were somewhat immature, to put it nicely. He had said the one with the short hair was Nakagura, Shipachi, and the other with longer hair was Harada Sano! Leave off, you grumpy old bastards! The hell I will, boy! You think I can? You think you can go away f with talking to us like that? Besides, I'm hardly mature enough to to be called old. Shibachi maybe, but not me. You son of a... The rule is I can swear if it's in the game. Uh, you son of a bitch. I thought we were friends. <laughs> Come on, Shin. Would an adult get so worked up over something like that? Uh, their back and forth um, had uh, had the feel of a routine that long predated my arrival, but they couldn't quite hide their ardent uh, glance in my direction. I could sense something on uh, something other than simple curiosity, though. A feeling of animosity or resentment, perhaps. Despite that cheerful levity, they had not forgiven my presence among them. Suddenly, I wanted to. I wanted very much to go home. I wanted to leave that place and never return. My chest tightened and I looked down on the floor, hoping that I just might wake up uh, at home in my bed. Ah, it's Sanon San! <laughs> I love how his name is Sanon, but because Chisuru, because in I've watched the Japanese versions, he, he she calls him Sanon San, so I just call him that. Like, also, it's so weird um, to call him just Okita because, like, Okita San! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I apologize for all of this frightening behavior. Please don't give them the pleasure of unsettling you. Oh, his voice was calm and warm, and I felt myself relaxed, even if I won't be a little. Are you serious? You're the scariest out of all of us, San and San! There was the faintest trace of a smirk on Hichikata's lips. As he finished speaking, the rest of the men nodded solemnly in agreement. I found it hard to believe that this man could be as scary as they all seemed to think. Oh, how crude. I can understand their feelings, but uh, but that our demon of a commander should think so. The man called San and smiled as he spoke and leaned back, his repose delivered. Hitchigata said nothing, but his own smile did not leave his face. I help it, Toshi! Kodo! Kodo Toshi! <laughs> You're lucky to have a friend like San and Toshi. Oh, wait, he's not Toshi. He's. Oh god, Toshi Hijikata, that's Kodo, the other one, sorry. Hijikata and Sanan had sounded so cold when they'd spoken to one another, not what I would have called friendly. Still, the man who had spoken had certainly sounded as though he, uh, as he thought they were friends. Oh, it's Kondo, not Kodo. Kodo is her father. I'm sorry, I'm, my head is a little blood around. Ah, my apologies, I haven't introduced myself. I am Isami Kondo, the chief of Shinsengumi. <laughs> man, I gotta change that voice. The most important man in the Shinsengumi, then. Toshi over here is the commander, and Sanan is our Connor. Colonel. 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 There we go! Okay, continuing where we left off. Um. Yep, Colonel. That, that, Colonel. 
Uh, Kanda, why are you telling him all this? Uh, why? Do you think it's a bad idea? Well, unless you really think this kid needs to know all our secrets, maybe you should keep your mouth shut. Exactly, why... <laughs> that was way too girly of a voice, not doing that. Exactly, why bother anyway? We don't owe this kid anything. Harada, Harada, Harada glanced away at Kondo and let out a bark of laughter. True, but it's not like telling him who hurt us. Kondo had looked rather disappointed when Hijikata spoke, but he perked up at Harada's words. I'd scared, sick, scared, scarcely known him for five minutes, but already I could see that he was well liked by his men. He had that sort of charisma that simply drew you in, a man who was impossible to hate. He is impossible to hate, really. I don't. If that's if if that's a person in this world, and um, we're like, oh yeah, you know Hakuoki? Yeah, I don't like that Kondo guy. I don't trust. I'm just gonna. I hate that Kondo guy. I'm just gonna go. I don't trust you. <laughs> that was a rather lengthy explanation. Well, let's get back to business at hand. Can you run through what happened last night? Kondo's glance moved to Saito, who gave a small nod and began to speak. Last night, we, uh, we were on patrol when we encountered some wandering running. They drew steel, so we thought. Some of our men subdued the running, but in doing so, exposed their failure. As he f uh, finished, Saito turned to look at me. I swallowed and forced my mouth to open. I didn't see anything. Hijikata softened a little by my response, but Saito remained expressionless, and the smile on Okita's face didn't change. You sure you didn't see anything? It, it, yes, I didn't see anything. I hope that if I said it enough times, they might start to believe me. Really? If that's true, I don't see what the problem is. Hold on a minute. I thought so. She said you helped uh, out some of our men. Or, uh, uh, you helped out some of our men or something? It, no, that's not true. I glanced over at Okita, but his smile still hadn't changed. But I wa whatever he was thinking was a mystery to me. I was running away from the run-in, and then some people with the uh, Shinsengumi uniforms showed up. Really, they sort of rescued me. Then, what means you saw them slicing up those running, right? Um, I couldn't exactly deny that, but I knew that if I just shut up, then they'd know for sure I was lying. So in other words, you saw everything. They are the whole ugly business. Um, I was completely at a loss. You've got an honest heart. That's not a bad thing, but... I wasn't sure what to make of Harada's words. My presence had not been a good thing for the Shinsengumi. Would their next words be the ones that, uh, that condemned me to the death of being in the wrong place at the wrong time? My voice shook, but I knew I had to try. I... I won't tell anyone, I promise! Seems unlikely this attack was mere chance, then again I have no reason to think you're an enemy either. Even if you do not intend to tell anyone, you could be captured, interrogated. I doubt you could withstand torture. <laughs> his words were still warm, but his words were cold and I began to feel my chances at life slip away. It's easy enough to stay quiet, but if someone should try to make you talk, you have no reason to keep our secrets. We don't have any kind of guarantee that you'll keep your word. It wouldn't be very smart to just let you go. They had a point, but... Let's just kill the kid. You want to keep someone quiet? That's their only sure way. But... I looked desperately at Kondo, who gave Okita a reproving look. Don't be so cold, Soshi. What do we gain by murdering a civilian? Okita's smile disappeared, and he looked down at the floor. Don't give me that look, I was just kidding. Then perhaps it should have sounded like it. Okita made an attempt at a dis raise of snort and looked intently at a wall, his face slightly red. But surely there must be something we can do. After all, we're talking about a child. I have no wish to kill him either, but we can't discount the chance that he could reveal information about us. Sanan paused for a moment, his brow furrowed, then turned to Hijikata. 
I would like to hear the, the commander's opinion. With responsibility of his, uh, with the responsibility of, of his uh, position evoked, Hijikata had no choice. He sighed and glanced around the room. <clears throat> Last night we had to kill some men who broke the code. This kid was in the wrong place and the wrong time. And I imagine you mean to say that's all there is to it. Well, he probably saw something, but I doubt he really understands what it was. Even so, this is serious. We have bigger things to think about. We have to keep this under wraps. If rumor gets out that soldiers of the Shinsengumi are thirsty for blood, that would be problematic. Shipati's words made sense, and they all knew it. Hichikata's face looked grim. Still, so she has a point. I think so she has a point. Uh, I think so she has a point. Still, I'll do whatever Hichikata and Kando tell me to. I think that we ought to let him go. Toto looked troubled. It's not like he knows why they went nuts, you know? Wait, what did he mean by that? To be honest, I hadn't really thought about it. Hijikata saw my eyes go, uh, wide and I saw his narrow. They flicked to Toto. Shut it, Heisuke. No sooner they were, the words, uh, were out of Hijikata's mouth than Toto clapped both hands over his own. Uh-oh, well this is going to make it even harder for us to let you go. Ha! <laughs> A man should always be ready to face death. You should make peace with yours. Ah, oh, you that the bird, idiot! A man. Oh, they thought I was a boy. Even with everything that's happened, that uh, I've completely forgotten how I was dressed. Very true. A brave death is always an option. Uh, when I was young, I committed honorable suicide. Although it didn't really stick, did it, Sana? That jokes were. Beric, but they both broke into rushes laughter at them. Saito did his best to ignore them. Hichikata, since we can't seem to risk, uh, reach an uh, agreement, can I send the child back to his room? As he spoke, Saito turned to look at me. If you hear something you shouldn't while you're here, then we'll have no choice but to kill you. Uh, he was right. If I remained with them, then I could easily hear something I wasn't supposed to. I didn't think he'd mention it for my sake, only as a possible concern for the Shinsengumi. But I was still glad he brought it up. True. Can you take care of him? Saito nodded. I agree. There are too, uh, there are too many careless men here. Come on, Sanan. What are you looking at me for? That ought to be pretty obvious. Which, which we're in charge of being careless, especially you, Heisuke. Hey, back off! It was just a mistake, right? I could hear Toto's voice rise as everyone turned to look at him. He looked at them for a bit, then turned to me and mumbled in a voice I could barely hear. I I'm sorry. Um, I was still afraid that I was that I was about to die, so I couldn't bring myself to tell him no harm had been done. But he looked as though he meant what he said, so I gave him an awkward nod. It was the most I could manage. Shall we go? All right. I can now review the status menu. Menu? What's the status menu? Can't see anything. Oh well. After they had taken me back to my room, I sat there for a time, looking down at my bound hands. Hmm. Rumors I'd heard uh, said about the Shinsengumi were cruel, vicious men, but they seemed much more human than that. Then again, even if as, uh, as I sat here, they were deciding whether or not to kill me. I don't think they want to kill me, but it seems like they might have, uh, they may, f they think they might, might have, not have a choice. If I didn't defend myself somehow, I'd most likely be killed. I don't know how I'm supposed to convince them though. However, they may, might still have felt about me. Uh, however they might have felt about me, it was clear that their priority was the welfare of the Shinsengumi. Oh, right. They all still thought I was a boy. Perhaps if I told them I was a girl, they might reconsider. Or perhaps they wouldn't. Or perhaps that would make my predicament worse somehow. A 
find a way to escape, attempt to explain my situation. I know that finding a way to escape is a hijikata thing, but let's just say, let's say first. First, let's say. Oh, there you go. Boom. Yeah, I know what you're doing. That that you're saving. Boom. Boom. No. There we go. Find a way to escape, attempt to explain. Let's just go. Bye! There was nothing for it, I had to try and escape. And that meant I needed to get moving immediately. Staying in the, that room wasn't likely to improve my chances. Fortunately, they hadn't bothered to tie me up completely again. Only my hands were bound. That would slow me down, certainly. But as long as I could move my legs, I definitely had a chance. Alright, now, the exodus. I cast my memory back to when they brought me into the building night before. Right. It should work. It had to work. I stood up. Holding my breath, I edged towards the door. Leaving this way was rather rude, but I hardly had a choice. RUDE! <laughs> They're gonna kill you! <laughs> With my toe, I reached for the door. I was almost there when suddenly it flew open and so I'm revealing... What? Eck! I stumbled straight into Kodo. Oh my, that was rather bold. You meant to run away, I assume. Um, trying to run the thought wise, it could will only make your situation more difficult. His voice was calm and not unfriendly, but his eyes were cold as ice. Too late, I realized, and they hadn't bothered. Uh, I realized why they hadn't bothered to tie me up again. They've been watching me. I told you once, and I won't do it again. Run, and I'll gut you. His voice was slow and filled with quiet rage. Sorry, but now we've got to kill you. We can't trust a kid and can't keep a promise. Oh, he just smiled. He didn't look very sorry. I... Now, if I run for it, I'm gonna die. You won't give me a chance to explain myself, will you? I bit my lip and looked at the floor. This wasn't fair. I hadn't done anything. But complaining wasn't gonna help me. Perhaps it would be best if I simply accepted my death. Then you don't may do whatever you like with me. I guess I roared with sudden laughter, his shoulders shaking, the anger in my voice had not uh, had not the had the desired effect. <laughs> You're a funny one. Oh he liked that. Great <laughs> Alright, I admit, maybe we're a bit rough on ya. Just relax, okay? We aren't gonna eat you or anything. What do you want? I glared at him with as much fury as I could muster, but I might as well have been staring at a wall for all that he responded. Heh. <laughs> Don't think I've ever seen such an innocent girl. Huh? That was reasonably close to the last thing I'd expected him to say. A girl. He knew it was a girl. What? So she- are you telling me this child is a girl? Apparently I wasn't the only one. Uh, surprised. Hijikata, however, seemed entirely unruffled. Really? Huh. I was sure you'd all figured it out by now. Maybe not Kondo, but... What? Then... That meant Hijikata had known all along? Alright, alright. Now tell your big brother. Well, why wouldn't a nice girl like you, uh... Dress up like a boy and run around Cherto in the middle of the night? Okita, even if I told the truth, would they understand? Sun and shrugged and let out a loud sigh. Perhaps we should all sit down and talk about this again. Some of us may have changed their opinion. Um, yeah, I have to end the episode here. I'm sorry for getting a little distracted there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!